The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I know I've told this story before, but we have two new members of our Jesuit community here who I don't think have, so uh, they get to hear it. Uh, on the first day of teaching high school ever, I was in room 310 in Tampa, Florida at Jesuit High School. It was a senior English class. I was very nervous, and they were not. Uh, it was first period. I was over-prepared, and they were not. So the students started coming into the classroom uh, first period, and one kid came into the class, and he was dragging a piece of luggage behind him. It was a roller bag on wheels, the kind you put in an airplane overhead compartment. And he kind of had this smug look on his face, and it's like, what's up with this kid? And so I thought, well, now seems to be the perfect time to try sarcasm. Uh, you know, uh, some of the best teachers I'd ever seen in movies uh, always use sarcasm to get a great effect. And even some of my own favorite teachers in high school every now and then would use sarcasm, and you know, we all loved it. So with all confidence that I would be a hit with the kids and endear myself to them forever, I said to him, so, are you taking a trip later today? I dripped with insincerity. He flushed a bit red. He looked a little scared, startled, uh, not smug. And he said, oh, no, sir, um, I can't lift anything more than about five pounds because I had surgery on my back two weeks ago. I said, uh, oh, okay, uh, well, uh, welcome. Have a seat. Uh, one of the hardest things I find with teaching is suspending that impulse to judge very quickly uh, rather than remain in this state of suspended kind of curiosity. Some might call it openness to growth. You know, the kids come into the classroom, you're like, this kid's going to be a handful, or this kid's going to be lazy, or this kid will always, or this kid is never. As it turns out, the kid with the roller board was very generous and very kind. After my poor welcome, he could have easily dismissed me. He could have easily judged very quickly that, <laughs> this is one of those kinds of teachers. But just the opposite. He and a good friend of his uh, who was in the same class, on their free periods they would come by and hang out in my classroom. And I kept in touch with them both for a few years after they graduated. And uh, you know, while I quickly judged him, he didn't quickly judge me. Pretty remarkable experience to be on the other side of someone's undeserved care. Uh, so Harrison and Mike, I doubt you're watching this this morning, but if you are, thank you. Jesus takes another look in today's gospel. Uh, you know, at first he sees this woman, a Canaanite, what do I have to do with her? But she has this persistent faith, this very genuine faith. She doesn't give up on him. And his perspective changes. And he heals her. Some may say, oh, Jesus changing? Oh, that, that can't happen. 
that would admit weakness. No, it's just the opposite. Jesus shows us uh, how to be uh, godlike in our ability to really take another look at someone, who they really are. Many things are happening in our world right now that challenge us. Obviously, this pandemic that we're living through, I think, is going to force each of us to ask the question, what does it mean to form a young man uh, for others? What does it mean to teach a student uh, now? It might be different than what it was in past years. It's not going to be forever, but we might take some things away from this that change the way that we teach. The murder of George Floyd is causing many people to take another look at how the sin of racism continues to damage our communities in this country. I know that we at Straight Jesuit, we're a very loving community. But perhaps there's an opportunity here to take another look. Not with the purpose of assigning guilt or, you know, oh my gosh, how bad we've been and all that kind of stuff. And not with the purpose of worshiping or making a totem out of what differentiates us from one another. But with the eyes of this persistent faith and a heart that's profoundly open to the lived experiences of our students and our colleagues. How well do we really know one another? How well do we know what it's like to walk in the shoes of someone else? Maybe it's someone we've been working here with for years. How well do we know them? I think that having this spirit of curiosity, this spirit of openness towards one another, it's not going to help us worship the differences. It's going to help us find the beautiful, the unique manifestation of God's image in each of us. And isn't this what we're called to do? Form men for others. And I think one of the key ingredients of being for others is to know the other. Even Jesus had to take another look. Today in the gospel, Jesus shows us that he is fully God and being fully open to growth. And so as we continue our work here uh, in the next few days. Let us pray for this openness to see God's image in one another.